if we look to the answer as to why for so many years we achieved so much, prospered as no other people on earth, it was because here in this land, we unleashed the energy and individual genius of man to a greater extent than has ever been done before. Freedom and the dignity of the individual have been more available and assured here than in any other place on earth. My fellow Americans, Retro Joe is here. We're back with raw power. Before we start, I really have to get something off my chest. And we really don't get into the political stances of YouTube and anything like that, really, so far. But, so you must know, if you're curious why we go on and off the air sometimes, this last week has been absolutely just a straight up nightmare. Uh, I'm not even going to... I'm not even going to go fully into my Retro Joe character right now, but just saying, WWE has been bringing the heat with these copyright claims against nothing. They have no stance. We're not infringing on anything other than our opinions. And WWE, I want you to know something specifically, you Vince. We are Americans, and we have an opinion. If you can't handle that, then you need to probably make your show better, okay? Because I'm not going to stop, Wildcat's not going to stop. And that's, that's the bottom line. That's straight up the bottom line. <clears throat> There's your heat, Vince. If you want to bring some heat back, go ahead and bring it back because we're going to come back with a freaking army. We are, all of us, are the WWE Universe, okay? You are not the WWE Universe. The fans are the WWE Universe. And if we don't like something, we have the freedom to express our opinions. And if you don't like that, I don't care. That's how the world works. You, want to, you, you don't want negativity from us on the show? Make a better product. Listen to what we're telling you and improve. Anyways, <coughs> so, much, so much to get off my chest. So much to get off my chest, but... There's more to it than that, but I'm just, that was my state of the presidential podcast union, whatever. Anyways, raw power. Yes, raw this week. Let's get back into these reviews. Let's get it going because I, I know you missed us. I know it. I know it. So we start raw tonight. Randy Orton demanding title shot SummerSlam versus... Drew McIntyre, because he wants to kill another soon-to-be legend, I guess. But, uh, yeah, solid promo. Just, it's fine. Randy Orton's a veteran. His stuff's always pretty much on point, so not really much to say on that. <coughs> we got, uh, we got Drew. He did accept that. So, SummerSlam, we will get Randy Orton versus Drew McIntyre. That should be, that, that should be really good. That should be really good. So, next, uh-oh. Uh-oh, we have our first speed bump in the show tonight. We have Nia Jax crying her little eyes out about opportunities lost and she wants to get back into it and all this. And Yeah. You know what, Nia? If you ain't got it through your thick skull at this point that no one wants you around and we all typically hate you as a wrestler and not in a good way, you should probably just leave, okay? There's plenty of other jobs out there. I mean... I can't think of any off the top of my head, but you could go somewhere else and you could, I don't know, make a difference. Maybe you should start like like a children's center for kids that don't have a lot of food. You could be Big Mama my Nijax, but you know. <coughs> Sorry, it's really dusty here. I just cleaned up, got a new chair. Uh, yeah, it's a little dusty, so I might cough a little bit on this one. Anyways, during this promo, we have Shayna Baszler. Oh my goodness. We have two of the worst together in a promo. Shayna Baszler basically attacks Nia Jax. And yeah, that that's all that happened. And then and then we move immediately on, right into commercial, into our match number one. is a tag team title opportunity for one of these awesome tag teams here in this match. It's a three-way tag team match. It's an opportunity for those prestigious tag team championships. Coming up at SummerSlam, so we've got... <clears throat> the Viking Raiders versus Cedric Alexander and Ricochet versus Andrade and Angel 
Garza. Dun, 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 yeah, those guys. So, other than that first Nia thing, let's go right down this list. So this match is match one. It was very freaking solid. I, I mean, no complaints here. Retro Joe says this match is good to go. So, yeah, check it out. It was a solid match. You know, I was uh, expecting the Viking Raiders to possibly win this, but they did not win because Andrade and Angel Garza are the winners of this match, and they're going to get their opportunity at those tag team championships coming up at SummerSlam. So, like I said, very solid. I enjoyed the first match. It was a lot of high action. Love, I love watching the Raiders. Great stuff. After they win this match, they go on to attack the sh Street Profits, because why not? Because that's what we do in the WWE. You know, I don't like some of the in between stuff in WWE. I sound like, uh, that's all, folks. Yeah. The WWE. Some things I don't like, and some things I do like. If they could fix the small things, we would be set. We would be really set. So, match two is a follow on from that Nia Jax Baszler beat him up earlier in the show there, right before this other match. This was stupid. So you have a dumb promo against two people no one cares about, then you have them have a match on match number two, and then they both get count out DQ'd just like the Asuka thing from before when Asuka and her got DQ'd. This is stupid, guys. Come on. And I'm telling you, Vince, I'm not going to hold back now. This is retro joke. This was stupid, okay? You need to get rid of both these people because you have Nia Jax throwing Shayna Baszler around like a rag doll, you know, for the whole half a second that this match was. Let's think about some in reality. In reality, Nia Jax doesn't know how to wrestle, so that means she's not actually a wrestler. On the other hand, even though I don't like her, Shayna Baszler has fought in UFC. So you're having this person that's not trained in anything throwing around this trained UFC fighter. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I don't care if she's this... this <coughs> what do they call her? The irresistible force? Yeah, they didn't change them words, but anyways. <laughs> no. You basically have a larger proportioned regular woman that has absolutely almost zero training in wrestling. I mean, she, she must have had some, but I think her family name is the reason why she's just there, you know, with The Rock and all that. But, yeah, so that's the obvious point of this, but I'm just saying. You have this basically untrained wrestler that's injured half the, half the damn roster, and then you have her throwing around a trained UFC fighter. It doesn't make sense, Vince. It doesn't make sense. And yes, I'm talking straight to you, Vince, because I know you approve these things. And I'm going to slam you this whole review, even though the show was solid. You know, I don't appreciate you coming after our podcast, and I'm going to make it darn clear throughout this whole thing. So, yeah, it was dumb. You know, it was a double count out. Nia Jax throws around Shayna Baszler, trained UFC fighter. And uh, then afterwards, Nia starts pushing down more officials. So, maybe this is a good thing. Maybe this is like a weird storyline or she just beats up all the people that work there that aren't wrestlers, and then they fire. Maybe this is her out. I don't know. I hope so. I doubt it, but... Anyways, too much time on that first section. Look. Let's go on. We have two gigantic promos here. The first one being Seth Rollins in the ring, talking about Rey Mysterio and his eye for an eye experience. Oh, Lordy. Plastic eyeballs flying everywhere. Yep. Then Dominique comes down. He's in the ring. Seth's trying to turn him. Obviously, obviously, this is never going to work. And then Dominique proceeds to attack Seth Rollins in a most vicious manner. Which I liked. I thought that was good. Bring that up, though. Don't Dominique, when you see him come down, like we've had this discussion on the uh, on the live show, don't Dominique look like... He don't look like a wrestler. He looks like... Like, like you... Um, like a younger uncle somewhere, just a regular person. That his face just reminds me of somebody from like from my from my state, like Tennessee. I got an uncle in Tennessee. Dominique kind of looks like him in the face. Like like it's not. I don't know. 
He's too normal for WWE. I'm just saying that. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Anyways. So, yeah, he attacks Seth Rollins. You know, gets in them first cheap... I wouldn't say the cheap shots because he's getting revenge. But uh, then we get Alistair Black coming down to help because obviously Dominique's not going to take down Seth Rollins and Murphy on his lonesome. So, yes, he will get that first hit in and then... You know, Seth and Murphy are just going to start beating down on him. That's when we get Alistair Black come down for the save. And then, yeah, it don't work out too well because then Alistair Black ends up in another situation where Seth's basically ordering Murphy to press Alistair Black's eyeball into that corner. That corner steps. They're trying to do it again. So, yeah. Then Dominique, out of nowhere, he just appears again and then starts beating everybody with can ticks. And then, and then that was it. <laughs> weird, kind of weird. I don't know. There's a lot of this, this, Max, Max. A lot of Kendo sticks in this whole thing. <laughs> then we get the promos I don't really care for. We got a promo with the MVP Lounge. Shelton Benjamin, Bobby Lashley, posing with their belts, the 24-7 championship, and the not earned USA title next to MVP. Uh... Basically, they offered membership to Mustafa Ali, and obviously this dude's babyface. He's not going to do it, so he turns it down. Ends up, ends up starting to get beat down. Our truth sneakily runs in and tries to steal the belt from Shelton Benjamin. Don't work out too well because weirdness ensues. Ninjas show up. Some more stuff. That's why I don't like these because like when MVP MVP is not the most charismatic person to me. He reminds me of, he's got like a deep tone in his voice, like he almost talks like this, foo. You know, he's got like Mr. T going on in there. But <coughs> yeah, there was all kinds of little crazy stuff in this little Archer did not recover that 24-7 build. Got ran off. Got ran off. But I will stay, I will say on this next part, because we're moving into match number three now with Mustafa Ali versus Bobby Lashley. We all know Mustafa's not going to be the almighty Bobby Lashley with his giant full Nelson finisher. That's a gimme. Because, you know, Mustafa Ali's really, really small. But let me tell you something. Bobby Lashley, of course, is going to win with that, you know, full Nelson. Let me tell you something, though. This was another good match. And I'll tell you why. Mustafa Ali, I don't know what it is about this kid. But, uh, you know, I know his background and all, all the stuff and his training and you know, how, how he is as a person and all this. I think dude's slick, okay? The ma the whole thing. The mask, the glowing mask with the intro. Mwah! Perfection. That's a perfect intro. It's great. His, his mic skills. Mwah! Perfect. Nothing wrong with him. He is perfectly capable of cutting promos. Entering ability, top notch. You know, I'd say 9 out of 10. I'd like to see this guy go against AJ Styles because they both have a similar, you know, fluidity in the ring. And I, I think they that would be amazing. I mean, I have to check my history. They may have at one point, but I can't remember off the top of my head. But yeah, Bobby Lashley took the win on this one. Mustafa Ali looked fantastic during this with all the flips and the high spots and the, and the fun, the fun, fun quickness of Mustafa Ali. I like this guy. Keep an eye on him because he's probably going to do great things. This is going to be a long show. I mean, rambling here. Let's get on it, Retro Joe. Match number four, we have the Raw Women's Championship. This is for the rightful champ because if y'all watched the pay-per-view, you saw Sasha sneakily steal the belt with Bailey wearing that ref shirt. She was tapping that one, two, three. Of course, Stephanie McMahon said no way. No chance in hell. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Stephanie wasn't having that, and they had to do a real match, which happened on Raw, which I think is stupid, because you want your big belts to change hands on the pay-per-view, so, yeah. So, this one took me by surprise. This I'm voting this one best match on Raw of the night. It was pretty long, but it was excellent. Another great match from these two, Sasha Banks and Asuka are two of the best women's competitors in the whole WWE locker room, you know, there's a few that are kind of close, but those two are top notch. I mean, those two are better than Bailey. She's got dose straps. Yeah. 
So, yeah. So basically, what happened was, I didn't see this. This this came out of nowhere. I could have said all day long, no problem. Oscar takes his belt, you know, keeps her rightfully earned dealio. But when you got two heels that won all the gold, you know. Crazy stuff is going to ensue, and that's definitely what happened in this one because Bailey attacks Kyrie Sane in the back because she was basically thrown out of ringside. She wasn't going to let the refs weren't going to let her cheat again. So she attacks Kyrie Sane. You can see Kyrie Sane in the back hollering for Asuka. Asuka don't know what to do. That's like her best friend, and then she's getting beat up. And boy, I, I didn't see this coming out of nowhere. The match was excellent. Like the moves are incredible. The back and forth chemistry was just out of this world. Great match. So many submissions tried on each other. But after Kyrie Sane hollered for Asuka because they showed the video during the match of the beatdown, Asuka goes running to the back. Of course, gets counted out, and Sasha Banks is our new Raw Women's Champion. I, I was I was shocked. I was shocked. And yeah. Asuka was not very pleased. She was quite irate about this. And then, um, man, I just, it, it, it's a, this was so, like the best match on the card, and it was like, it was like the bad guys won kind of ending, you know? It's like, oh no. Oh no. I know. Yeah. Uh, also, if y'all don't know, you don't follow all the news and the recent events and everything. This was the last time you're going to see Kyrie Sane in a WWE ring, I guess. I mean, unless she signs again. But after this, after this whole incident, she went on Twitter, announced she was leaving WWE. Don't know where she's headed to. Good luck, Kyrie Sane. You know, you're, you're awesome. You were great in the ring. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that, but she's definitely out of the WWE. Like, not kayfabe for real. She's, she's done. All right, so let's move it on. We've got two more sections to cover. Let's get this finish and knocked out. Match number five, Humberto Carrillo versus Murphy. <coughs> this one, I was hesitant. I was like, this one's probably going to be... There's always one not-so-good match. I guess that was the Naya two second D double DQ I, I guess that was the bad one but yeah this was actually really good um, very solid Creo looked great I, like I said I was hesitant by this these two I was like this is gonna be like a mid card deal no I mean they are kind of mid carders but they both proved me wrong they both look great Creo, Creo looked really good in this one Murphy will steal that win when he Slides that Murphy's Law on him, Berto, unfortunately, though. Final match of the night. Final match of WWE Monday Night Raw. The special stipulation match with Dolph Ziggler versus Drew McIntyre, our current WWE champion. This was a uh, super solid, very, very good match. Wasn't as good as, as the Sasha one, but... Hey, this was the rematch of the big guys, the Titans, the big ones, the big guns. So, basically on this one, Drew got to pick the special stipulation. And all he picked was extreme rules for everybody. So, both of them get to use all the stuff. It was just, I don't know, it was so much destruction. There was just like, if you like hardcore matches, it's a pretty good one. You know, not much blood or nothing, but man, these two beat the ever-living crap out of each other. Kendo sticks, chairs, tables. Freaking Dolph got thrown through a barrier at one point. Drew McIntyre got thrown into the plexiglass. He's just like, oh my goodness. Like somebody's gonna get hurt for real. <laughs> barrier though, man, that looked like that looked like that old school Brock Lesnar when he threw that guy through the barrier. Can't even remember the other guy. But uh Yes, I say this was probably Drew's toughest opponent so far, Dolph Ziggler. Time wise on these matches. But then Something goes to happen. We go to see Dolph do his finisher, and he misses. And then the table that's been set up in the corner of the ring, we see that Claymore, Claymore country. Boom, it's Dolph Ziggler. It's the one, two, three. 
And then, as Drew's standing there holding up his WWE belt, even though this is not for the belt, you know, it did they didn't show the thing before. So, as he holds that, <laughs> I got cut off. The phone cut off. Hold on. <laughs> Anyways, as Drew McIntyre holds that WWE gold above his head, we see a sneaky camera trick. And then we get RKO out of nowhere. That's right, Randy Orton, after he challenged him earlier in the show, he RKOs him out of nowhere. Just to prove a point, because he is the legend killer and Drew is quickly on his way to becoming a WWE legend. And that's all we have for Monday Night Raw. I apologize for that camera cut. This must be a long video because usually the camera don't cut off. So anyways, guys, Thanks for watching. When we missed you, check out our streams. We stream on Twitch. I stream. I stream a ton of uh, modern video games as well as retro games. Also check out Moonshine Mafia Productions. He's on there at least twice a week, doing some crazy, crazy antics and doing his stuff with his buddies. So we're all together, one big happy family. And remember, to stay safe out there because this thing is still going on. Wear your masks be good to each other. That's all I'm saying. And Vince, I swear, if you don't knock it off, nothing's going to happen because you're a billionaire and I'm nobody. But whatever. I'm still going to bring these heat in these videos because you deserve to know what's going wrong with your company. Anyway, y'all stay safe and keep it retro.